This potential energy of a single charge, say for example, I'll consider a single charge Q, which is having a potential V, then the potential energy in an external field for a single charge is given by U is equal to QV. What is the work done? W2 is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R12. Why? Because W2 in the presence of external electric field is nothing but V1 into Q2. What's the value of cos 90? It is 0 then the potential energy will be equal to zero because this entire term will be equal to zero. Hello everyone, welcome to session four of chapter two, electrostatic potential and capacitance. This is Swati from Department of Physics with the Ashram Pri University College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. Dear children, in this session, we are going to learn about the concepts which are related to electrostatic potential, electrostatic potential energy and the potential energy due to a system of charges and many more interesting concepts. So let us start with electrostatic potential energy. So what is the meaning of electrostatic potential energy? We know potential energy is basically by the virtue of a position we will define. Correct. So here also the electrostatic potential is indirectly related with the same concept which means the work done in bringing a charge, any charge from certain distance say for example from an infinite distance to a point in the external field is called as the electrostatic potential energy. So this work in bringing a charge from infinite position to a point in an external field is called as, I mean this work is stored in the form of potential energy of a charge. So this potential energy of a single charge, say for example I consider a single charge Q which is having a potential V, then the potential energy in an external field for a single charge is given by U is equal to QV, where U is potential energy, Q is a charge, V is its pot potential. Now let us apply the same concept in studying the potential energy for a two charges. For a unit charge we know which is u is equal to q into v. Now we have two charges q1 and q2 which are placed at certain distances at the points a and b. They are separated at a distance r. Now let us define the potential energy for system of charges. I have two charges. So for this system of charges it is nothing but is the work done in moving a charges from infinity to their present locations or the present positions. So this work done to bring the charges from infinity to this present locations, this work done is stored in the form of potential energy. So now we are going to write the expression for a potential energy for a system of two charges. Now I have considered a two charges Q1 and Q2. Now initially before they come to the field, initially they were at infinity. So Q1 and Q2 are at infinity. So first what do we do? First we will bring Q1 charge. So Q1 is brought from infinity to point A. Initially there were no charges here. They were at infinity. First Q1 charge is brought from infinity to A. So the work done without electric field is zero because there was no external electric field before the charge Q1 comes to this point. There was no external electric field and the work done to move charge Q1 from infinity to point A is zero. So this charge Q1 now produces a potential at a distance R. It is given by V1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R. This is from the expression for potential that is V is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q divided by R. Since I have taken the charge Q1 here it is V1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R. Now the V1 is nothing but the potential produced by charge Q1. Let us now bring the other charge from infinity that is Q1 from infinity to point B. So now there is an external field which is due to Q1. So the work done is equal to V1 into Q2 because we know the potential V is equal to work done in bringing a unit positive charge from infinity to that point. Now W2 is nothing but in the place of V1, I am substituting 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into Q1 from the previous expression and we get W2 as W2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R. So what is the total work done now? To get the total work done, we need to add W1 plus W2. We know W1 is nothing but 0 and W2 is 
1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r. Adding these two we get w is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r. Now this is the total work done and this work done is stored in the form of potential energy and it is denoted by u. So u is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r and for like charges if you consider q1 q2 value will be greater than 0 and that is positive potential energy and for unlike charges it is q1 into q2 is less than 0 and potential energy is negative in this condition. So this is very important. This is the expression for electrostatic potential energy for a system of two charges. Now let us derive the same for a system of three charges. Potential energy of system of three charges. Look at the diagram carefully. I have three charges q1, q2 and q3. They are at points A, B and C respectively. Here R12 is nothing but distance between charge Q1 and Q2. R13 is nothing but the distance between Q1 and Q3. R23 is nothing but the distance between Q2 and Q3. This is basically the diag diagrammatical representation. Now we have considered three charges Q1, Q2, Q3 at positions A, B and C respectively. Initially all three charges are at infinite distance. Now I am bringing charge Q1 from infinity to point A. So initially there was no electric field. The charge Q1 is being moved from infinity to A and since there is no electric field the work done in bringing a charge from infinite distance to a particular point is 0 and hence W1 is equal to 0 I will consider it as equation 1. So now this charge Q1 will produce an electric potential in the space around it and that is given by V1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R12 because I have taken the charge Q1 here and that produces a potential V1 it's 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 divided by R12. Now we are bringing or let us say Q2 is being moved from infinity to point B. Now what is the work done? W2 is given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R12. Why? Because W2 in the presence of external electric field is nothing but V1 into Q2. What is V1? V1 is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 into Q2 divided by R12. Now the same way let Q3 being moved from infinity to point C. Now when it comes to Q3, there are two charges which are influencing Q3 that is Q1 and Q2. For Q2, it was only Q1. So now W3 is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q3 divided by R13 plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q2 Q3 divided by R23. It's because W3 that is the work done in moving charge Q3 from infinity to point C has to deal with the potential due to Q1 and the potential due to Q2 and hence the expression W3 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q3 by R13 plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q2 Q3 divided by R23. Now what is the potential energy of a system of charges? How can it be calculated by calculating the total work done? So what is the total work done? That is sum of all the work done what we have written the previous steps. So W is equal to W1 plus W2 plus W3 that is work done for Q1, Q2 and Q3. Now this total work done is stored in a form of potential energy and it is denoted by U which is equal to what is W1? Look at this expression W1 is 0 and W2 we have 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1, Q2 divided by R12 we have substituted and W3 we have these two terms that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q3 divided by R13 plus 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q2 Q3 divided by R23. So U is equal to Q1 by 4 pi epsilon naught is common in all the three terms. So I am taking it outside and writing the remaining terms inside the bracket. So it is Q1 Q2 divided by R12 plus Q1 Q3 divided by R13 plus Q2 Q3 divided by R23. And this is the expression for potential energy for the system of three charges. We are talking about potential energy of system of charges. Let us now study what is the expression for potential energy of a dipole. What is a dipole? It is nothing but two charges which are separated by a distance 2A. Now in the presence of external electric field, if the dipole is placed 
what is the potential energy of a dipole let us now write the expression for that so for that we have to consider a dipole i have considered plus q and minus q they are separated by a distance 2a which means this must be a and this must be a again now this dipole is placed in an external electric field and p is a dipole moment we know what is p that is a product of either of the charges and the distance of separation between them and the direction must be always from negative to positive charge. So, P is equal to 2AQ where Q is a either charge and 2A is nothing but the distance of separation. So, that is a dipole moment. So, now we have placed this dipole in an uniform external field. So, in an uniform external field, dipole experiences no charge but it experiences a torque. What is torque? Torque is nothing but P e sin theta. We have already derived an expression for torque in the chapter 1. So, we know torque P is equal to P e sin theta where P is a dipole moment, E is an electric field. We are writing an expression to find the potential energy of a dipole. What is the potential energy? It is nothing but a total work done. Now, work done in rotating a dipole further through a small angle d theta against this torque is w dw is equal to tau into d theta where dw is nothing but the work done tau is the torque and d theta is a small angular displacement now the total work done we have to calculate by the external torque in rotating the dipole from an angle theta 1 to theta 2 initially they are at one particular orientation that is theta 1 and after the torque is applied, external torque is applied, it will change its variation to theta 2. So, we have to find out the total work done which gives us an idea of potential energy. Now, to calculate the total work done, we need to integrate the above expression with the limits that is theta 1 to theta 2 tau into d theta. We are doing an integration. Now, if you integrate small work done or dw we will get the total work done w which is equal to now here integral of tau into d theta from the limits theta 1 to theta 2 in the place of tau we are substituting p e sin theta d theta but we know p and e are constant dipole moment and the electric field is a constant and because it's an uniform electric field so we have the terms theta 1 theta 2 now i remain with sin theta d theta what is integral of sin x dx it is minus cos x. So, similarly we have integral of sin theta d theta which is equal to minus cos theta. So, we get w is equal to p e into minus cos theta limits are theta 1 and theta 2. Now, in the place of this theta variable we need to substitute the limits. So, when the limits are substituted we get w is equal to minus p e cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 because here we have minus cos theta and this can be written as w is equal to minus p e cos theta from the limits theta 1 to theta 2. Now in the place of theta we have to substitute the limits that is upper limit minus lower limit we get w is equal to minus p e cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 where theta 2 was the upper limit. Now and this is the total work done which is stored as a potential energy and that is u which is equal to minus p e cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1. So, usually the work done in rotating the dipole from the position which is perpendicular to the field to any other position. So, theta 1 is pi by 2 and theta 2 may be any other angle so it is theta. So, let us now substitute the same in the above expression we get u is equal to minus p e cos what is theta 2 it is theta minus cos 90 but what is cos 90 so we get v, u is equal to minus p e cos theta minus 0 or it will be u is equal to minus p e cos theta. So, that is our expression for potential energy u is equal to minus p e cos theta. So, we have an expression that is potential energy of a dipole that is minus p e cos theta u is equal to minus p e cos theta when the dipole axis is parallel to the field that is theta is equal to 0 because our external field is like this. So, when dipole is placed in this way that is parallel to external field then theta will be equal to 0 the value of cos 0 is 1 and we get u is equal to minus p e. Suppose when the dipole axis is perpendicular to the field like this, then theta is equal to 90 degree. What is the value of cos 90? It is 0. 
then the potential energy will be equal to zero because this entire term will be equal to zero. Now, if the dipole axis is anti-parallel to the field, say for example in this way, then theta is equal to 180 degree. So, what is the value of cos 180? It's minus 1 and we get the potential energy as plus P because we already have minus here. So, minus into minus becomes plus. So, U will be equal to P E. We can also represent this in a vector form that is U is equal to minus P into E. So, this is about the potential energy of a dipole in an electric field. So, in this session we have studied about the electrostatic potential energy and also the potential energy for a system of two charges and three charges and also potential energy of a dipole when placed in an uniform external electric field. So, in the next session we are going to learn some more interesting concepts related to potential and capacitance. Until then keep learning all of you. Thank you.